Hey Agape, this is Brian and Jamie, and we want to welcome you to the fourth week of our prayer journey. This week may be a little bit challenging because as Jesus continues to teach us to pray, we get to this phrase that says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. We really like part one of that, forgive me. We don't like so much part two that says we should forgive others. There is this little word as in the middle, forgive us as we forgive others. We're gonna have to wrestle through that this week in the word. But for now, consider this parable from Matthew chapter 18. So let's take a look at Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Um, where Peter says, Lord, when someone has sinned against me, how many times ought I forgive him? Once? Twice? As many as seven times? And Jesus says, you must forgive, not seven times, mm -hmm. but 70 times seven. Jesus continues and says, if you want to understand the kingdom of heaven, Think about a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Just as the king began to get his accounts in order, his assistants called his attention to a slave who owed a huge sum to him, what a laborer might make in 500 lifetimes. The slave, maybe an embezzler, had no way to make restitution, so the king ordered that he and his wife and their children and everything the family owned hmm. to be sold on an auction block. Hmm. The proceeds from the slave sale would go toward paying back the king. Upon hearing this judgment, the slave fell down, prostrated himself before the king, and begged for mercy. Have mercy on me, and I will somehow pay you everything. The king was moved by the pathos hmm. of the situation. So indeed, he took pity on the servant, told him to stand up, and then forgave the debt. But the slave went and found a friend, another slave, who owed him about a hundred days' wages. Mm -hmm. Pay me back that money, he shouted, throttling his friend and shaking him with threats and violence. The slave's friend fell down prostrate, and begged for mercy. Mm. Have mercy on me, and I will somehow pay you everything. But the first slave laughed and was hard-hearted and refused to hear his friend's plea. He found a magistrate and had his friend thrown into prison, where, he said, you will sit until you can pay me back. The other servants saw what was going on. They were upset, so they went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Mm. The king summoned the slave, the one who had owed him so much money, the one whose debt the king had forgiven. The king was livid. You slovenly scum, he said, <laughs> seething with anger. You begged me to forgive your debt, and I did. What would be the faithful response to such latitude and generosity? Surely you should have shown the same charity to a friend who was in your debt. The king turned over the unmerciful slave to his brigade of torturers, and they had their way with him until he should pay his whole debt. And that is what my Father in heaven will do to you unless you forgive each of your brothers and each of your sisters mm. from the very bottom of your heart. So you can see the challenge this week that we forgive as we have been forgiven. That's going to be a journey for some of us. It's going to take some work where we spend time with the Lord and we really allow him to open us up to see if there's any bitterness, resentment in our own relationships. Now, I know as we start this, some of you would say immediately, but Brian, Jeannie, you don't understand what I've been through. You're asking me to do something impossible. 
And I want to just say from the beginning that biblical forgiveness isn't the same as forgetting what the other person may have done or even releasing them from responsibility of the injustice of their choice or the hurt or the pain that they've caused. Forgiveness really is allowing the grace work of the Spirit in our lives to bring healing and wholeness where our hearts have been broken and a greater trust that the Lord will take care of and he will determine what should happen. Forgiveness allows us to walk in freedom. Unforgiveness doesn't put the other person in bondage, but rather us as we are bound by that resentment, that bitterness, that envy. It shouldn't surprise you that this challenging petition in the prayer has been debated and there's been scholars and church fathers who have had many different opinions about this. What I want to point out is this is the only petition that when Jesus finishes the prayer that he comes back to you to reinforce in the following verses after he teaches them how to pray. Then just a few pages over in Matthew chapter 18, he tells this story that Jeannie read for us. Those scholars, some of the things that they've said and what's been the wrestle is, you mean he can only forgive us as well as we forgive others? Augustine, the church father said, this is a terrible petition. Spurgeon, the famous preacher, said that if you pray this prayer and harbor unforgiveness in your heart, it's like praying your own death warrant. Think about it like this. If I were to come to the Lord and pray, Father, forgive me by the same measure that I've chosen to not forgive others who have hurt me then what we're calling down on ourselves is condemnation and judgment, if you read it that way. Now, certainly there are others who have argued, surely God is not limited in his ability to forgive us tied to however feeble fallen humans are able to forgive. Again, this week, we're gonna wrestle with this. We're gonna dig into the scriptures and try to understand God's heart. Yeah, I'm no scholar, but... Um, you know, considering on a purely practical basis from my own life experience, we can't walk in the faithfulness of our being forgiven by God if we hold on to bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Yeah. Technically, this week as we begin to study, we learned that unforgiveness isn't even a word in the English language. We use it all the time to mean the opposite of forgiveness. But you see, unforgiveness isn't a grammatical problem. It's not a theological problem. It's a personal problem. And if we are unwilling to extend forgiveness as freely as we have been given, then we'll miss out on God's best. So don't stop short. Let's press in this week and let's really learn what Jesus meant as he taught us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we extend that same forgiveness to others. God bless. Look forward to seeing you on the journey.